God bless this evening. Take a look at this. That, my friends, you are looking at the sunset to the eve of my 23rd birthday. Yes, as of recording this, my 23rd birthday is tomorrow. And this woodland area appears to be somewhat demolished for future um, constructions of some kind. 22 years. It's been a good run so far. The older one gets, the more seriously they start to take life. And the more seriously they start to take life, the more they tend to ponder questions like, what's the meaning behind it all? What am I here for? What's my significance in the bigger picture? People can have varying answers, depending on their worldview. And whilst it is true that children can be raised to be indoctrinated by a certain worldview, that's never a guarantee that they'll carry that worldview through. Oh, guys, look at that. Do you see that? There's deer. I, there's actual deer. You probably weren't able to see that, but I've seen like two doe over there. So yes, life can have its many surprises. You may expect life to go through one way, but then life can suddenly give you a complete 180 in certain aspects. In most recent years, I know I've had a complete 180, a complete shift in views. I think many an intellectually honest person can say they've been through a similar experience. Life is full of fun times. It can also be quite sad. There can be pain, but there can be joy found in it too. In fact, there can be joy found through the pain. So with all this wondrous works, one has to ask, how should we ought to live life? In today's secular society, many people will say, well, just listen to your feelings, be true to you, do what's good for you, bruh. Now anyone of any worldview can live a good life, or more precisely, a decent life. But the real question we should be asking ourselves is, can we live a life that is wholly consistent. Can we live a life that makes sense of everything around us? A life that gives us purpose and hope and the discipline to better ourselves. Because what if living a decent life wasn't enough? Because once you've achieved a decent life, then what then? What have you been living a decent life for? We get so caught up in material things and jobs and life and so much. But once all that's done and through, what is it all for? Surely if it all adds up to nothing, then what's the point of it all? However, if there was something truly rewarding and beautiful at the end of all the turmoil and struggle, to justify all the joy and the fun that we have, then surely life must have a purpose. And what if this purpose didn't just boil down to mere feelings. What if hopelessness was entirely oriented around feelings? And what if hope was entirely oriented around reason as well as emotions? What if we could find a bridge that could help us find our way between ourselves and wholeness? In the past, my primary aim over this channel was to entertain as well as to occasionally like enlighten people with like mature storytelling, but now, with my understanding of philosophy and theology, I have a further drive to enlighten people. One of the main driving questions to get to know anybody's sense of theology and philosophy mainly resolves around their belief in God. I've always believed in God, and I would argue that everyone subconsciously believes in God as well. Of course, not everyone is willing to admit this, but that goes to prove my point. For the longest period of time, all throughout my youth and teenagehood, if you were to ask me why I was a Christian, I probably would have responded with an answer I now consider rather redundantly stupid. I probably would have said, uh, because I was raised that way. But despite being raised in a Christian family, I was raised in a way that I was encouraged to partake in a rather lukewarm way of life. My, looking back now, I think it's safe to say that my actions didn't always quite justify my beliefs, especially during my late teenagehood. Whenever I encountered anyone who had beliefs that contradicted the ones that I grew up with, for some reason it never came across my mind to question them. 
wouldn't have considered questioning other beliefs until, in very least, recent years. It all started this whole outlook on life when I encountered the Alpha Course, which sprang up a fresh outlook on Christianity. It was a course aimed for believer and non-believer alike to introduce them to why Christians ought to believe in the faith. And the main reason was that there was actually very strong historical evidence to suggest that the story of Jesus isn't just some story passed down from generation to generation, it's a historical fact. And a very well attested historical fact at that too. Watching the Alpha Course presentations and partaking in the talks afterwards, my mind was blown. And I, I felt this intrigue. My intellect seemed to have increased. Something in my mind opened up, and it hasn't gone away since. Even when facing all this opposition that's come to me in recent years. Ever since I've been told that Jesus Christ is a historical fact, I looked into so many other facts about archaeology and history and philosophy and science, mainly looking through academic books and watching scholars and academics talk about the reliability of Christianity. Even a few secular uh, philosophers admitting that Christianity does hold some water. I can mention people like Tom Holland, no, not Spider-Man, the historian Tom Holland, who wrote the book Dominion. Tom Holland can attest that Christianity had a major part in forming the society we see today. Secular people like Dr. David Berlinski can point out the flaws in some secular thinking. Berlinski is an agnostic, by the way. I find it a new persuasive argument on my part that people from other sides of the worldview arguments are admitting certain facts about this one worldview, Christianity. I looked into all this and it largely resolved around this one topic called apologetics. Apologetics derives from the Greek word apologia, which means to reason. As I learned the consistencies of this philosophy, it encouraged me to look at the Bible in a new light. And as I read the Bible again, I started taking it more seriously and I started reading the Bible. I thought, wow, all the stuff the Bible has to say is timeless. Like every detail that I'm reading is super relevant to today. The way we ought to treat one another, the way in which we ought to think and reflect about life. It all made sense. I looked at all this consistent information. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. I mean, why would anyone in their right mind reject this? If I'm to just share this with everybody, then we'll form a better society. But then came the following events. Now, these following events I'm about to describe is usually the point when a lot of people in today's society would turn around and completely reject Christianity. It was the events of conviction. This was something I had to go through personally. As I read the Bible verses and watched a Ray Comfort video, I learned that I wasn't as good a person as I thought I was. In fact, I'm a terrible person. And I don't say that in a way that I'm depressed. You guys know me, I'm a very upbeat person. No, no, morally speaking. None of us could live the perfect life. And uh, during that time, I regrettably admit that I was giving into temptations resolving around lust and terrible misuses of sexuality. And as I read the Bible, I was reading specific verses that was not matching up to the way I was living at the time. I was reading verses like Jesus at the Sermon of the Mount telling people, if you so much as look at a person with lust, with like sexual desire, then you've already committed adultery in your heart. That's a very high standard and I've broken it. I've probably also stolen things in the past, probably this uh, 
Lion King based pen from my sister, or at least wanted to take it. I must have stolen something at some point. I've lied. I've mentioned time and time again that I lied during a Christmas D&D &D game about high numbers. Honestly, looking back at some of my previous videos, this thing is just making me think, man, was I really that way? So with that guilt pressed onto me, combined with the conviction of the philosophy and the historical evidence I've been looking into, the most logical thing to do was to repent. I remember crying myself to sleep one night at the terrible things I did. So I prayed for forgiveness. The Holy Spirit's come into my life and now my life has been made anew. You see, the thing about lust is that it, in your mind, it degenerates other people into objects and not as actual people which is a terribly selfish thing to do. So when I was born again, I started seeing people as people. May have been a few struggles with the whole lust thing, but I've also noticed that no matter what happened, I could never bring myself to hate anybody with absolute hostility. And if someone were to insult me or attempt to say something that would presumably emotionally um, distraught me. I largely just took it on the chin. And whilst feelings could hurt, I learned that logic never changes. Only perceptions of logic do. I realized that as I was living the born-again lifestyle and telling people about the consistency of being born again, I've had a multitude of friends and family get mad at me. But of course, based on what I've been through and what I've learned, this born again lifestyle is the lifestyle that makes the most sense. It humbles you to admit that you were wrong. It disciplines you to better yourself. And ultimately, you come out of it with a greater hope on living, now and forevermore. That's the long-term hope that I want everyone to experience. That I want everyone to know. But unfortunately, as I got my friends and family mad, I realized and learned something quite harsh. A lot of people in today's society are not really on a truth quest. They're on a happiness quest. They'll just believe whatever they want as long as it makes them happy. And unfortunately, this has only gotten worse and worse. And this can be seen in such political agendas like the cancel culture. People have been so obsessed with chasing after happiness and chasing after lust, the thing that used to hold me captive, mind you, that when they get the mildest bit convinced, they'll lash out because they don't want to be morally responsible for redeeming themselves from the sexual activities that they've been up to. Namely, treating other people like objects. You see, something I've learned is that within the confines of a Christian marriage, the couple are not just treating each other as sexual objects as an end in itself, like so many other people do with casual sex. A married couple treat each other like people, and sex is used as a means to an end to blossom the relationship in love. It's that intimacy, that love, not just chemical ecstasy. No, no. Genuine care and genuine love for people of everywhere. Even your enemies. That kind of love is the love that God endorses. And that kind of love has managed to transform even the worst of people. I have seen a testimony of this psychopath, David Wood, or was that a sociopath? who was, and still is to this day, to the most part, unable to feel most emotions, a lack of empathy. Yet when he found out the reasoning for God, as well as his divine love, he transformed it for the better, and he no longer felt a desire to hurt anybody. Like, why in anyone's right mind would you reject that kind of love? Because people are blinded by short-term pleasure. Look, here's the thing. You can find pleasure in the short term. You can focus all your energy on immediate desires. 
That's something I've noticed that a lot of people who tend to be quite rude focus on. Immediate pleasures, but not long-term pleasures. They obsess over mockery and immediate lust, but then that satisfaction goes away, and what are they left with? A barren emptiness. Let's give an example. Say you were in a scenario where someone who really irritated you was uh, with you. People with immediate short-term desires would probably lash out at them, or at the very least have a more likelihood to do so. People who th think in the long term have more of a tendency to be patient, to tolerate them, to hear what they have to say and then respond accordingly, or not respond accordingly, given the certain situation. Now, I'm not saying that people who think in the immediate short term are inherently bad people. All I'm saying is, if you focus too much on immediate selfish pleasures, then you're more likely to live a miserable life. You won't have that profound love for others. Even if you had a casual sexual mate, that would not give you that deep love that everyone is looking for. Everyone is looking for this enlightenment. And because we live in a society where people care more about feelings rather than facts, people are trying to avoid conviction because they don't like being suppressed and they don't like to feel pressured by this guilt. But people who think more logically can experience this guilt and then put to action the implications of where their guilt should follow, to repentance, to apologizing. The difference between a marriage that I described and any other kind of sexual relationship is because a marriage in the right context focuses more on the profound love of caring for other people as people. Now, people who fall under the other categories, mind if I ask you a question? In your romantic relationship, to call it for now, are you focusing more on your partner or on the sex? Think about it. Because if you're focusing entirely on the sexual pleasure, then you're going to miss out on the long-lasting love. And because you're so focused on the short-term, immediate, lustful pleasure, that's going to go away as quickly as you desired it. People who think in the short-term, not just with sex, but with other aspects of their life, have more of a tendency to rush into things and ultimately ruin themselves. People who think in the long term have more of a tendency to be careful about every situation that they're in, to benefit and to build towards a higher goal, even if the process has to be very slow. So now let's apply short-term and long-term thinking with beliefs and worldviews. I've been analyzing philosophies and the Bible itself. So to conclude this video on the eve of my 22nd birthday, People who are watching, if you're going to live a life, which you are already, then please, find purpose, find hope, find truth, and be consistent with it. Wouldn't want any contradictions now, would we? If it happens to be your birthday as well, happy birthday. If it's your unbirthday, <laughs> Ah, very merry unbirthday to me. To who? To me. Oh, you! A very merry birthday to you! To who? To you! Oh, me! Celebrating the 23rd birthday of this Scottish weirdo! A very happy birthday to you!